So whether you've been collecting Goodyear welted boots for quite a while, have just recently started, or are completely new to the world of Goodyear welted boots, I believe this is a boot that you may wanna consider getting and putting in your lineup. I'm gonna be explaining what I like about this boot, what I don't quite like about this boot, and the biggest and most important thing, is this boot worth its price tag? How's it going everybody? My name is Nathan Nepper, and for the past year and a few months, I have been collecting, reviewing, and diving into the world of Goodyear welted boots. Today we will be taking a look at these Thursday Explorers in olive suede. A very interesting boot that breaks a lot of the conventional ideas and methods for a boot to create something a little bit different than your average typical Goodyear welted service boot. Alrighty, before I jump into the review and breakdown of this boot, I just wanna make it clear that I've not been sponsored, paid, or anything of that sort to make this video. I bought these with my own hard-earned cash. They were 250 bucks at the time of this recording, um, and I don't believe the price has changed since I've gotten a hold of them. Alrighty, so starting with the sole, like I do on all of my boot reviews, this is a Vibram Nuflex sole. So this is definitely an interesting construction. The material is not hard rubber like you'd find on a classic Vibram 430 sole, which the front of this boot actually very much uh, resembles in pattern wise. This is kind of more of like a hard foam. It's a little bit harder than what you'd find in like a running shoe, but honestly, I have mixed feelings about this. It is really durable. And for the use that I've taken it so far hiking with my cousin uh, down in Georgia recently, which was the first time I took these out and actually put them to use in a rainstorm with just a hoodie and all my camera gear, that's a different story. Overall, the sole held up really well. Gave me lots of good traction. Um, I, I never once felt like it would let me down or anything like that, which is really important in a pair of boots like this that you might take, you know, off-roading, if you will. But I am kind of concerned by how well this foam sort of sole will hold up. I think in the long run, it's not gonna hold up as good as a straight Vibram rubber sole will. But at the same time, this does kind of give it a construction that's going to be a little bit more lightweight. And overall, these boots are probably lighter than my Thursday Vanguards, which these guys right here, I have a review of them on the channel. And honestly, comparing them side by side, they're very similar in weight. If the, these might actually be heavier, I would assume they're probably pretty close to the captains. The vanguards are a little bit heavier than the captains, from what I can tell. Um, and so, overall, that's not bad for a boot that has a bigger sole and a bigger, taller upper here. Now, stitching wise, this is Goodyear storm welted, so that's fantastic. Now, how do you tell if something's storm welted, right? Well, normal welt would just be like a strip of leather, goes all the way around the boot, seals it, helps keep it waterproof, technically water resistant. Um, but the thing with the Goodyear storm welt is it had to, has this little nub of leather on the inside that pushes up against the upper, and by doing that, it seals it from uh, water and moisture a little bit better because it has this little bump that goes up, kind of shelters it, Another good thing about it is that it keeps dirt from kind of clogging and getting in there. So if you do get these in mud, you can take a brush, scrape it off. If you have any mud left over, uh, get a wet toothbrush and just run it through there. And it's not gonna get like stuck in the boot or anything like that. And it's easily cleanable with a rag afterwards. Now, something that kind of is concerning is that with this Vibram Nuflex sole, you have the bottom foam part, then you have this rubber bit here in the middle. It's not leather and then the welt is sewn into this rubber. So from what I can tell, seeing that there's no stitching on the bottom of the boot, I believe they stitched it through the welt and then into the rubber and then back through. So technically this is sold like a normal boot would be within this additional soft rubber piece that has the tread on it being glued on. I think the construction on this will probably be fine. I can don't really see these coming apart. They did stitch the well into the bottom part of the sole. I think it'd be fine. I think you're probably going to run out of tread on the bottom before anything starts separating like that. So the midsole and insole construction in these boots is Thursday's cork bed midsole, which is nice. That cork will mold to your feet. 
and it does have a memory foam insole. Now, I don't believe it's poron, so that's different than, say, the Captain's. Um, but one thing I did note is that these are kind of more squishy on the inside, a little bit more like a sneaker. Now, the addition of the cork has led to some firmness in there, um, but overall, these are a lot softer wear than even the Captain's. So, moving on to the upper. The upper is pretty interesting. From back here in the heel counter on the boot, all the way to the front on the toe is one solid leather piece. Then you have the top part of the upper that has all the eyelets in it right here. And then you have one other leather piece that reinforces the counter going all the way up. And that's it. There's really like three pieces of leather in here. Um, the tongue is actually separate and sewed on to this bottom piece. So there is that. This is double stitched, so I think you won't have any problems with durability. Um, I kind of like the idea that it's all one piece because that is less stitching that you have to worry about getting caught on anything sharp, rubbing up against something, getting cut if you are taking these out on hikes and ex exploring in them and whatnot. Now, the leather itself is Thursday's olive suede. And let me tell you what, this impressed me. Um, I've never had any of Thursday's weatherproof suede or weather safe, one of those. It's their weather resistant suede. It really impressed me. It's actually super durable. It looks nice, but at the same time, it doesn't feel like suede. And it just has this feeling of rugged durability and not like your typical suede where you're afraid to get it dirty, you're afraid to get it muddy. And I actually think this gives it a little bit of a texture and a patina. It's different than a normal leather patina, but this suede will take on a really nice look and it already has, which is super cool. On top of that, it's really easy break in. There's, there's lit almost literally no break in with these boots at all. Um, you won't need to worry about that. Now, the laces themselves lace all the way up to the top. Um, when you're putting them on, you're probably gonna have to pull the laces out like this. They are a pain, but you have eyelets all the way up here, and then you have these little roller type eyelets. I would have liked to see at least the top two on this boot be speed hooks, or maybe all four of them, allowing you to lace them up a little bit quicker. Um, if they're speed hooks, you wouldn't need to leave the laces all in here, and you could easily lace them up in a matter of seconds. As it is now, it's kind of a pain in the butt, not gonna lie. That's something you could either get fixed by a cobbler if you really wanted them to do that, or, you know, just deal with it and move on. Obviously, they have this really nice padded cuff up here, similar to uh, the, the Wheat Timberlands, which is kind of a cool addition. Kind of gives it that padded, sort of sealed, feeling on the top, a little bit more comfort, which is nice to see on a boot, especially with a big upper like this, because as you're turning your foot, you're gonna have a little bit more pressure up here than you normally would in an area that your whole foot and lower leg is probably not used to having much rub on it. Alrighty, let's talk about sizing here. So I'm a size 9.5 in most boots, size 10 in sneakers, and I did get these in a size 10, so I could wear them with thick wool socks this winter through snow and slush and whatnot. That's the main reason I got these boots for myself. Now, if you're wearing these to go hiking, do some stuff like that, well, this thin suede will probably be okay. It is glove lined the whole way through, so they might be a little bit warm for some things, but if you're not planning on wearing these with really chunky socks, you should probably get the 9.5. I think it'll fit you really well that way. Um, they are really roomy, especially in the front with the way this toe box and everything is shaped. It's a little bit more spacious than the Captain's, which kind of are all condensed in the front and even the Vanguard's. All right, so wrapping it up here, do I think these boots are worth a $250 price tag? Absolutely. I would definitely recommend them. I would say they're more of a hiking, off-road, durable, go through the slush, wintertime boot, less of something you're gonna wear um, in the summer. These are more of a rugged adventuring boot and in that they excel, they're super comfortable, they look absolutely amazing. And yes, I would get a pair of these. Um, they make it in this olive suede color, they make it in a more of a wheat nubuck color, kind of like the Timberlands, and they also make it in a black color. So you do have a selection there. Although this olive suede looks absolutely amazing, really nice and rugged. So that's it for me, guys. If you enjoyed the video, you wanna see more reviews, boots like this, let me know by hitting the like button, leave a comment. Let me know what I can do to improve my videos. I've been trying to experiment with a couple things, different camera angles, more clips in the videos, and all that stuff. So giving me feedback is the best way to support the channel. And obviously, if you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. I have a whole month planned full of videos, so it should be exciting. That's it for me. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.